So I request all brothers and sisters, please be seated. We're going to start our next session of the program before lunch break. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. I'm really serious about time. So brothers, sisters, if you are able to come, please come. Otherwise, you'll miss certain things. And also, as this is not any community organizational program, so I'll try to run it in my own way, inshallah. So, um, I will take two simple questions or poems, one from sister, one from brother, if you want to. You don't have to. Come in quickly, please. And, um, and someone who has got the microphone should be in here. Yeah. So there is one brother who wants to ask a question. It should be as brief as possible. And uh, if any sister wants to ask, it should be as brief as possible. And I, I would say, see whether I can answer immediately, inshallah. Uh, initially mentioned, uh, sir, can I start? Yeah. yeah. Uh, alaikum. Uh, initially mentioned that this uh, today's lecture is part of a bigger course, right? Yeah. And you are kind of uh, short in it, right? Yeah. So is there any way we know more about the bigger course, or is there, is there anything available online? Or no, it's it's not uh, it's not on online because um, uh, <clears throat> it has got a sort of brand, and uh, I run this. Whoever asked me to run for six weeks. Some schools run this for parents, and um, so wherever I go, I give short lectures and maximum one day course, summarized course. But uh, running a full course takes hey, at least six yeah. days or four days. So I don't know whether this is possible. But um, uh, if you visit my Amana Pointing website, probably you'll get some information. But I don't run, I don't write run full course anywhere else other than England. And I've got a couple of books, but uh, but they are books. So, um, online course I don't have. Any sister from here, quickly? Any, do you have any? And can, can, I, can, I, I, question? can I request brothers not to scatter too much? Because my eyesight will, if you can cling to this. Yeah, half and so if you can just fill up this, this half, and first half, and then continue half on of this, this side, please. Half of this, trying to uh, squeeze as much too as possible towards this side. And could you please close the door so that I don't hear any noise or distraction? Is there any question from sister side? If, if you don't, then don't worry about this. I have one a small question to you. After one hour, because you just, I just gave basic introduction. How, can you kindly you sit down please, brothers, sisters? Because I feel it's distract, distraction. Sorry, I'm a bit um, disciplined in my, in my life. Okay, that me look at. Those, those of you who feel they are positive and optimistic, you know, the f feeling, feeling, just is subjective. Those of you who feel you are positive and optimistic so far, raise your hand. Okay? Okay? And those of you who feel that it's not going well, be honest, I, I, I don't know you, so you don't have to be, just raise your hand that it's not going well. Okay, one sister. What I would do now, um, I'll try to move quickly because I have to sort of bring out basic elements of this of this of this whole you course. Have, you have to be seated. You don't have to follow this. It's probably in your in your slide. Uh, it's just the explanation of the full five components. You know, there's balance, growth, and development over the top row, pa uh, parent-child relationship, these are the things I do. So I'm not doing, I'm doing probably some of them scattered way. And um, um, so you will you will find some of them. So you'll find a flavor of what I do. And I'm not saying my course is perfect, it's the best. This is what I do. I, f I find it for myself, this is, uh, th this is, this is important. But if anybody follow another course, that's fine. And um, everybody has got different ideas and ways of doing things. And there is no perfect, perfect thing in hum human society. And um, some of the elements in the course that I design may not work for you. Others may work. Follow anything that you like that works for you. I'm very, uh, um, very broad on this sense. It's not a matter of discussion. This we need a healthy living, and that's part of the balanced growth and development. 
and uh, these are important and this is in your this is in your pack so i'm not going to even discuss this now this is important important in the sense that uh, those who have those who have got some background knowledge of psychology especially ch child psychology then probably they know better than me uh, but the essence is uh, children from zero to two, that means from birth to two, that's the weaning period, and that's mentioned in the Quran. And uh, it's the, there's no view of life for the child, because the child doesn't understand anything. For parents, it's love and safety. You give them love, and you keep them safe. safe. That's the essence, nothing else. And uh, you enjoy, because dealing with children is really, really enjoying and rewarding. And this enjoyment cannot be had in any other way. So enjoy your life positively with the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And then um, you can teach them names and whatever they learn. And whatever they say is funny, they, they are beautiful. Okay? Uh, you cannot imagine the love that a child can bring in your life. Um, it's, not, it's not a burden. And now, problem will not come until certain time, but pre-school period, two to, two to four, there is a sort of psychological view which starts growing in the children's, children's minds uh, subconsciously. Uh, this is mine. The, you know the toy, they will cling to this. I'm not, I'm not give, give it to my, give it to your brother. No, it's mine. Okay, this is the human psychology. Mine, mine, this is individual self. That is important in life. We want to protect our life. We don't want to die. Okay, that's a suicide is haram in Islam. So the worth of individual gift that Allah has given in us, that's unique. It doesn't have to, we don't need any extra knowledge to understand this. So, in gradually in their language, you know, the, when babies, you talk to the baby, baby, you talk the baby talk. You talk, you lower your voice, you change your voice, you become a baby like them so that the child can grasp you. So the way we communicate, we don't communicate with our young children in that manner. It's natural. We have, we, human beings are real natural learners. So you teach them the rules that, okay, there are rules to follow. It is, it is, it is it's yours versus everybody. So gradually in the way that child understands. In front of us, there's sort of time when you uh, say what you can do, this should be done. All not through imposition, through discussion, through loving and caring language, so that the child doesn't feel pressured. Child doesn't do things because mom has said this or dad has said this. Child will think and child will ask, why should I do this, mom? It's not that because I said so. That's not the answer. You do this because it's good for you. It's good for me. I love you. And uh, you give some beautiful reasons. You try to create more reasons. So, these are the things. Junior years, that's another phase, 7 to 11, normally that's the, uh, that's the junior schools in, in England. In England, the primary school is divided into two parts, although within the same, same building, infant years and junior years. And that's what, what is in it for me, to teach the values and behavior gradually, because that crosses also 7 to 11 means it, Initial seven year has passed. They are in this second phase of seven to fourteen. Secondary year is the traumatic. Traumatic means dangerous, challenging, opportunity, opportune moment. It's dangerous, but it is you know a high speed car. You can move fast, but there is a danger in it. If you make an accident, you, you may die. In the plane, five hundred miles an hour, you you go fast. But if there is an accident, there is no way of surviving. So in this speed, there is danger, there is reward. And if people doesn't ride a car because there will be accident, you never know that when you walk, somebody can hit you. So we have to be risk taker. Risk means in life, there is always a risk. So this is the age when children become risk takers. And the nation and community is knows how to take risks, they go to different places, they create, a civil, they create civilization. Muslims did that. Muslim teenagers were leaders of the, leaders of the army. 
Muhammad bin Qasim was the commander of an army when he was only 16 plus or 17 year old. Okay, 17 year old boy. He was the commander of many commanders. Osama bin Zayed Radhalan. He was a small, small and many companions of Abu Bakr and others followed him, was under him. So this is the lesson that we should learn that in this phase, 12, 16, 15, people can be leaders. Abdul ibn Abbas was a teenager, when became a scholar. And in the companions of Professor Islam, he used to answer lots of questions that many companions didn't know or didn't answer. On occasions he kept quiet and he was asked why are you keeping quiet? And he felt that I feel a bit embarrassed to say something in front of all these great Sahaba, but I know the answer. Okay? If we treat our young people of this age as, as matured, they will become matured. They can change the world, they can change the society. But sometimes we keep them as if they are, they are our baby. Okay? So if, they, if, if we keep them as our baby, they will remain baby forever. So that's the problem with the, with the nation who cannot, which cannot succeed. Okay, risk takers, they, 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 they make accidents, but they, they change the world. And the English people came to this shore, how many miles? From plane directly, it's 11,000 miles. They came in here, they occupied this land, they are now the leaders of this country. So Muslim did this for, the, for Islam, Western people did this for money or conquering the lands. That's the only difference. Otherwise, the features and the characters that started germinating this phase. Teenage phase is the germination of all these qualities that's in here. And then 16, 14, they're, they're adults, more or less. So this seven, seven year rule, seven, 14, 21, and these psychological things that have Western, Western psychologists have uh, discussed, and this, this is not watertight. Two, four doesn't mean a, a child can be more matured in two than, than some child in, in four. So there is a flexibility. It's not watertight, as I mentioned. It's not mathematical or physical science. Okay, this, this is one aspect of when children grow up, they'll learn how to misbehave. They'll learn how to be rude. They'll learn how to hurt you, hurt you, mom and dad. Okay? This is the phase that we have to be really watchful from from before that period. So there are biological, there could be biological reasons, genetics reasons, environment reasons, psychological and social reasons. So we have to ascertain what, why my child, who was really, really humble, who was innocent, who was loving and caring, suddenly becoming like that. That is the traumatic phase for mom and dad. You know the three girls who missed away from East London area and went to Syria, they didn't show any of this. Some children show this, show this misbehavior. Some children don't show this. Okay? Suddenly they vanish. Suddenly do certain things you will be amazed. And I've got plenty of stories that children who are more talkative, a bit rude, they are probably better than those who, are, who keep quiet. So if a child argues with you, don't be afraid and don't be really worried. If a child keeps quiet for, for some reason, doesn't talk at all, there are reasons for you to be worried. Because you never know what is happening in his or her mind. So don't be daunted with a child who, who, who argues with you. Because in argument, you can, you, you know, face language and argument, what sort of personality the child is growing up with. But, and I dealt with children who are, who were really, uh, very misbehaving. And it hurt me, but I knew how to deal with that. And I, in most cases, I succeeded in keeping them in school so that they are not excluded. But uh, I failed in s with certain children, some of them Bengali, who never talked. Who they, they don't talk to the teacher, they don't talk to the parents, they go to their room, close the door, they're like deaf, dumb. You never know what to do, what to do with them. So this could be the reason. So before shouting at them, see what was the reason for your child's children's misbehavior. I'm just giving a general overview of this, and then I'll come to the specifics. These are the youthful features. Uh, <clears throat> and that's the most 
with young people, the features, the qualities they have, they can change this world. If we can divert their destructive energy into the positive energy, the Sahaba were, Professor Islam did with the young people, then that's the, that's the future of our nation. So they have the energy, they have got um, adventure, creativity, idealism, but they can have witness, rebellion, they will be feeling independence and give them independence. Okay? But try to bind them with the moral and spiritual anchor. But give them freedom. Without giving them freedom, they will, they will try to break away from you. Lifestyle trend. Now, dealing should be, children should be given, given personal space. Don't always try to talk to them, give them lecture, or breathe in their neck. That's why you used the term. That means always see what they do, try, try to do. Don't try to spy on them. So spending quality time, I'll explain quality time, what, how we do, should do this. Being patient, but be, be vigilant. Watch out, but patient. Don't, don't just immediately respond to anything. You try to digest what's the meaning of the word he or she is saying. Being sensitive and open. When you use your word, Try to be careful, not say certain words that, that, that might hurt you. And I learned from my, from my mistakes. My daughter was the, is my eldest child. In her early teenage, I said something which grammatically was not right. I was not, you know, for English is my, is not my first language. And she took that as serious and she was crying and crying and crying. I didn't know what, why she was crying. And when I realized that I made a mistake, I apologized, apologized, apologized I hugged her. So we, make, we, may make, we may make mistakes, but we should be courageous enough to acknowledge our mistake. There is no harm and there is no embarrassment in, in accepting our mistakes and say, sorry, sorry, mom or dad, whatever name you call. I'm really sorry, I didn't realize this. And they don't realize that we are human beings. We are not above any, any mistake. So apologizing to children or wife or husband is nothing, nothing to be embarrassed about. This is, this is all, as human beings we do this. We, we, we make mistakes. If we don't make mistakes, we are not human beings. As simple as that. So tackling sensitive issues. This is sex, relationship. These are, in the Western world, this is like Bangladeshi Dalbat Bolayar. This is like Dalvat, that means common things. The way children behave, others behave, boyfriend, girlfriend, this is it's a totally different world. And we are living in this world trying to protect ourselves, so we have to be really, dis we have to discuss this, but in a sensitive manner. Sensitive manner depending on their age, depending on their maturity, and use the word the way um, that is understood. Okay? When Allah SWT has discussed Many of the things, human progeny and child, child within the mother's womb, in, in the different stages, in the Quran, in the beautiful language. Okay, so children will do a lot of silly things, will write something, will, it's, children's life is, is really, really enjoyable. You can enjoy your child's, teenage ch children's life if you really are a bit courageous, if you have good relationship, you really enjoy it, I'm telling you. It's a real fun for parents who can make this as a fun. It's not, it's not bullying. It's not, it's not frightening. Okay? Internally, you make dua, you are frightened. That's another, another thing. Okay. Online activities. I brought this new because children follow mobile. They have most, most children now, the secondary children have, will have Smartphones. Smartphones are like a computer with internet facility, Wi-Fi facility, and they can download, upload anything. Okay, so the world is wide open to them. They can download them. <clears throat> they can download pornography. They can download Quran and Hadith. Choice is theirs, but that choice has to be guided by parents. That's what it is. You cannot simply say that okay, I will not give you anyth anything in life. If you don't give them anything, like, they will complain and they will buy something on their own or they will do something else. So be realistic. We live in a world which we cannot control. It's like sunshine when it comes. We can close our eyes, close the windows and doors and sleep for the whole day. 
being an unsocial person, but that is the reality the sun has come and is going to shine. Technology like this, it is there. Only thing we need to know how to use it, and it's like riding a beast. You ride a horse properly, it will take you from one place to another. But if horse rides you, it will trample you under its feet. So don't be slave to our technology, but let's use it. I know it's not easy, it's easy said, said, said than done. So mother and father has to plan when smartphones or computers can be given. And when you give them, have a serious discussion before and prepare them so that they use it sensitively even if you are not there. Initially, probably put it in the common place, sitting room, so that everybody can see. Don't give all sorts of gadgets, wrong gadgets, in their room, personal room. If they are not mature, they will mess around, mess around this. So, you know this online grooming, sexual grooming, online extremism, and the girls in the Islam, three, three girls, one in three and one two Bengalis. And before that, another girl, four girls from his, one school went to Syria. Probably you heard, heard about that. Is there anyone who hasn't heard this story of Britain? In this Bengali, Bengali community lost, lost three girls? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you have heard this. So they were teenagers, 15, 16, 17. And they were not showing any sign to their mom, dad, brother, sister, anyone, any clothes. They kept everything safe. That's why the danger of keeping quiet. What they did, they followed the online. Online means live internet or text messages. This is online. Anything, WhatsApp and um, internet and what you can see through the um, Wi-Fi and internet, that is online. So be aware of online activities because many children are lost. Some are lost, few are lost in terrorism, extremism. Many are lost in pornography and online grooming and and all sorts of things. I don't want to discuss all this because you probably would be aware of this. So there are pros and cons of this online. You know the you can know the world. Encyclopedia Britannica, massive knowledge. You can just a click, you know the world. World of knowledge, world of discovery, world of science, world anything. On the other hand, you switch into other things, just a click into another website, your life can be destroyed. All sorts of all sorts of rubbish things. So we cannot we cannot close our eyes from this. The parental and adult roles should be to have basic knowledge on online world. You may not be expert on this, and parents are not experts unless you are IT specialist. But you have to have a knowledge that there is a world called online world, and smartphones is the is the avenue for that. Computers, laptops, and um, they are, they are there. See, if you have knowledge in it, then you can discuss my son, my daughter, you are using this and that, so you can, you can have a discussion at home. If you don't have any knowledge that there is a, another world living uh, in, in, our, in, in this world, then children will do whatever they like, because they know that you don't know. If children know that you know, then they will be careful. If children know that you don't know, then, okay, it's up to them. So there is a beautiful art in the in, in the Quran. And Professor Islam's example, these are mentioned in here. I think that's in your folder as well. Okay. I'm giving the some aspect of here's some picture of children growing up. How do we motivate our children? There's a complaint that my child that child doesn't want to read, doesn't want to sit down, doesn't want to go to mosque, doesn't want to read Quran. How do we motivate them? The same child will do certain things even if you don't any, say anything. So there is self-motivation. Some people are motivated by money, some people are motivated by greed, some people are motivated by power, some people are motivated by attraction with other, other, other gender. That's the essence, that's the way Allah SWT has created us. So our motivation should be inspired by the teachings of Prophet and the love of Allah SWT. Okay, but for that, there are some basic rules. Everybody needs a personal space. If someone comes and beats on my neck, and um, I will not feel comfortable. 
So, and men and men personal space, men and women personal space are also fundamentally different. A child and man, boy and everybody should know this. So this is sort of, this is just metaphorical things. Children are adventurers, they want, they, we need success in their life, but we need, they need space for them so that you don't unnecessarily squeeze them. And if they, if they cannot spread their hand, they will be squeezed, they will be uncomfortable. So let them be comfortable in your house so that they can think and they would know that my mom and dad is not spying on me. They will have trust on you. You have trust on them. And these are the some areas that you, we should we should do at home. Undiluted love, self-esteem, sympathy, plenty of things. And what are the styles of parenting? Because it's not a it's not a interactive one. I have to go through like this. But uh, uh, I, I'm I'm sure you'll be aware of this. That I I put this in a, in, in a quadrant. It's a quadrant. We may be very controlling. Okay. Some parents are really, really want to control their children. Though this don't know this. I know many families in, in England. One father, uh, then Alhamdulillah, his children grew, grew up better. But when father came home, three, four boys, adolescent boys, would behave like a tiny little baby, would not utter a single word. I used to do some private tuition in that family on my own. And Alhamdulillah, all of them grew very, but when I when entered into the house, they were as naughty and boisterous as everyone. The moment father came from outside, everybody was silent. Is this a good fatherhood? I don't think it is. In, in that case, the children grew better like educationally, but they succeeded, alhamdulillah. But this parenting style, fatherhood, parent, fatherhood style is, is not good. Fortunately, the, the children, Alhamdulillah, grow better. But in most families, if father behaves like that, there will be a disconnect between the father and the child. And this disconnect will, will bring many, many future agonies in life. Okay, so control is not good. On the other hand, you can be very liberal friend. Okay, my child is still very young. Why should I wake him up? Because um, he's still a baby. Why should she wear a scarf, is still a little child? To them, no child grows. By the time the child grows, they are not, they don't learn anything and they don't follow Islam, then they start worrying and shouting. So don't become permissive. You say, there is no absolute freedom in this world. On the other hand, if we excuse lemon very hard, rather than just it will, give, it will be bitter. Do not make our children's life bitter. On the other hand, do not let them, do not let them grow like a wild animal. They will be like um, wild animal. They will, not, they will not have any control. So Islam is in fact a middle path. Okay, not this extreme, not that extreme. It should be in the middle way. And the middle way doesn't mean that only one is thin line. There are many ways of middle line. To me, if someone is sort of 10% uh, to 90%, okay, then there are good in it. 50 is the probably, that middle line is probably the best. But uh, in reality, we are human beings. So, permissive on the left, controlling on the right, that's one aspect. Hostile or confrontational attitude, always, always, making comment, you haven't done well, you didn't do this. On the other hand, warmth, that is important. So that has to be balanced. So that's the quadrant is, there should be a level of control and there should be, uh, there should be warmth. It's called tough love. We love you, I love you, but my love is not unconditional. If you do a mistake, then, um, my, my love for you will not diminish, but there are consequences. So this is the way how we, how we deal with our children. It's like leadership. And leadership is, okay, that's another thing. Leadership is, um, is, you have seen the dictatorial leaders, like Saddam, Gaddafi, they fell. On the other hand, those leaders who don't know how to, how to run a country. So dictatorial, permissive, and neglectful, 
If you neglect your child, then child will grow on, on his or her own. So we have to have a balance as a family, mom and dad together, always together plan what their parenting styles will be. If mom is occasionally a bit tough, dad should be a bit soft. Or it could, it should be reversed. It's do not always, especially moms, I request you, do not always say that let your dad come and he will punish you or discipline you. You have the right to discipline your child. And mom, dad also should not say, okay, it's mom's job. It's both parents' job. We can reverse our role occasionally. I can be tough as a father. I can be love, loving as a father. Mom should be tough as a mom. Mom should be loving as a mom. Obviously, we have different fitra. That is understandable. But don't leave one aspect of children's behavior to be dealt by one parent only. Otherwise, children will feel that my dad always punishes me or disciplines me. My dad, my mom always loves me. So it doesn't work because there will be bad feeling about the dad, unfortunately. So we, mom should be careful and dad should be careful. Okay. Uh, discipline is another aspect. There are these, and it's in your folder. And uh, I will probably discuss one or two because uh, in, in the full course I discuss all of them with, with role play. I don't have any time for you to come and role play. That means someone becomes mom, someone becomes dad or uncle, and um, that's an exercise that people see, and probably that becomes easier for them to remember. But it's not possible in here. So most importantly, role modeling, mom and dad becoming a role model, uh, that is the best thing in the parenting. If they are not seen as role models, then they will find role models in other places. Everybody needs a role model, especially children. Why do our children in England and America, probably in here, boys wear stud, uh, different hair styles and all sorts of funny styles? It's not from mom and dad. It's because they follow some football star or film, film actors or somebody they become their role models, okay? And you, if, you, if you are in the world of, say, Twitter follower or Facebook follower, you will find people like good singers and others, they have got millions of followers. But people, academic background, they have got only thousands. That means young people follow and idolize, in other words, idolize, they idolize celebrities. Children follow celebrities. And this is the world of celebrity, because celebrity means uh, someone is made famous, publicized, and um, they become world famous, and millions of people follow in their Twitter and others. So that is the role model is, is mom is a role model for daughter, especially for the teenage period. Dad is a role model for son in the teenage period. That's one aspect. But dad can also be a role model for manhood. If a daughter sees continuously at home that mom and dad are shouting and dad is probably abusing the mother, then that daughter, when she goes and will get married, will have a wrong feeling, bad feeling about man. Because she will think that my dad was a bad man and my husband could be a bad man. Okay, this role modeling is important. Whatever happens at home, that is a role model. Blabbing mom and dad, children will, will like that. And there's other aspect. If there is an infight between mom and dad or disagreement, and one abuses others at home, physically or emotionally, and children take advantage of that. Okay, so that's the one. Then there are, there are others, I'll go through some, and smacking means physical punishment. I'll discuss this because legally, probably in Australia it is illegal, but I should mention what is what is the situation uh, on this. Why should it be illegal? Okay, clear instructions. This one discipline technique, and I normally bring people for exercise, is a straightforward, simple thing, but it is not as simple. <clears throat> you know, whenever I, we ask our child to do certain things, my son bring a glass of water, my this and this, you, you have beautiful names for your children. Can you tidy up the room for me? Can you 
Can you put these clothes in the, in the basket? Can you, you know, all those things, household chores. You ask your child, can you do the homework? Can you do this and that? Unless you are a super mom who doesn't say anything to the child, you would do this. And it is important you do this because child has to learn things. It's called household chores. Otherwise, you will be overburdened of everything. Child will, child will grow without any knowledge of doing anything. So, you have to learn the technique of telling your child what to do and how to do. So, first of all, if you want your child to do certain things, you see the age and maturity, whether the child can do this. Okay? If the child is under three years old, do not ask the child to bring a glass of water for your, for your guest, because the child will break the glass. Okay? So, you know your child's ability. So, give the job that you feel comfortable that child will be able to do, or should do. And then, child may ask, Mom, I don't know how to do this, then don't shout. Say that, okay, I will tell you how to do it, I will show you how to do it. This is the way how you do this. So, only then a child probably will do this, and will succeed in doing this. Even then, some child may make mistakes. It's like a teacher in the classroom explains a math, maths once, twice, and thrice. Have you understood? Yes, sir. Then, 80% do, some people even cannot do this. It could happen in your family. But rather than becoming angry, you try to, okay, I will help you, inshallah. That's the way you do this. For anything that we do, for anything that we ask our ch ch child or children to do, we have to keep this in mind, so that when once they are able to do this, you are happy, then you can say thank you, well done, and you can, mashallah, you can, you can praise the child. So you get an opportunity to thank your own child, to praise your child, mashallah, your hand is better, mashallah, you, you have done it perfectly well. This is an opportunity to thank, thank a child. And everybody likes, likes, likes praise and thanks. But if you give a hard work and a child fails to do, it's not an opportunity to thank him or her. So in a way, you lose an opportunity to thank a child. And the child also, once he or she can do this, feels comfortable. Okay, I have done this. Okay, feels proud. But if you have a tough job, if you give a tough job, job and cannot do, then child will feel, okay, I probably cannot do anything in, in, in life. It appears very simple thing in a day-to-day -day life, but through this misuse of our clear instructions, we make some of our children confident, we get opportunity to praise them, or through misuse, we make them less confident, and relationship goes weaker. I'll give you a story, and probably it is a bit funny story. Nasiruddin, Mullah Nasiruddin. How many of you have heard his name? Nasiruddin Mullah or Mullah Nasiruddin? Okay. He was a wise, and it's Ottoman time. Whether that was a real figure or there were lots of stories about him. Very wise, but naughty. So one day his, one of his friends came and they were having chat in the sitting room and there some stage the friend said, my, my friend, can I have a glass of water? And Nasiruddin called his 10-year-old boy, my son, come here, your uncle, give salam, as you want to say, give salam, and can you give me, bring a glass of water for your, for your uncle? Son goes, Nasiruddin stands up and gives a slap in his face. Son starts crying. And Nasiruddin's friend says, Nasiruddin, you are a wise man, why did you slap him? He was going to bring the glass of water for me. Mullah Nasiruddin smiles, my friend, you don't know my son, I know him. Why? That uh, he will go and put a glass of water, and that glass will be full of water, and he will hold it lightly, and is there's music going on somewhere, sorry. He will hold it lightly, and the glass will fall from his hand, glass will break, and I'll have to slap him. So before, before doing that, I'm slapping him earlier so that he doesn't break the glass. 
Is this discipline technique good or bad? It is bad. But so this, this, is, a, this is a story, but this tells us what, what we shouldn't do to avoid slapping our own child. So this is a story that I always tell, that rather than slapping a child or shouting, we tell them we spend a few, few minutes time with them. Um, so this, this clear instructions is the basics in a family. I'm telling it seriously because it's one of the serious discipline techniques in my opinion in the family. Because we have to give our children tasks. We have to ask them to do certain things. Otherwise, you will be overburdened in your whole life. I know Bengali moms normally don't, don't want to give children any tasks because they think that they love them very much. But part of our love should be to prepare them for future good tasks. That is part of our life. If we make them, if they, if we make them useless in their life, they don't know, they don't know how to cook, a, cook, a, cook an egg even, then it's not, it's not giving them love. This love is probably not, is definitely not helpful. So this clear instruction is one of the basic principle, basic discipline techniques. And um, this is not related with misbehavior. This is just asking them, asking them to grow as a responsible, able young person in life. The more tasks you give them with good instructions, the more capable they will be. They will be able to help you in any ways. Okay? It's only given, given all right, so it's not just a glass of water. Tidying up, cleaning their beds, all sorts of things can come in. Can you tidy up your bed? Clean your bed? Can you wash your clothes? Can you, can you, can you sweep your house? Ask them whether they do, can do this. Show them if they don't do this. Once they do it nicely, please thank them. Hug them. Okay. This is another really, really um, important thing. That's about personal relationship. That was, previous one was discipline. You know, positive discipline was component of course, and relationship is another. And this spending one-to-one -one time is fundamentally important. The reason is, <clears throat> you know the online world, telephone and others, they keep people away from the society. People are eating. They are they are using their uh, they are using their um, uh, smartphones. Even in the family session, people use texts, talking with mom, eating, and mom talking. Child is not listening because the child is playing with, with the things. That has become a nature to the extent that many people who go to mosque, many people don't go to mosque, but those who go to mosque before. Entering into a mosque or before starting salah, they will just check in the in the, in, in the in the smartphone. Is there any message for him? Is the kiyama coming today, or something happening to them? And the moment salam is given, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, they will come bring that and check the check the check the mobile where the kiyama already happened. I have seen this in my own eyes. In front of me, on my side. Imams remind them that do not use or put it in silence, but um, in the middle of the prayer, rings, music, adhan, Imam is giving, leading the prayer with, and the, especially in the Zohar and Asr, when Imam doesn't recite anything, uh, here is some, some music, another music. People are callous, careless and callous. And because we have, many of us have inadvertently, unknowingly, subconsciously have become slaves of our technology. As I said in the, in, in the first session, we should not be slaves of our technology. We should, say technology should be our slave. They are for our service. Our brain needs some rest. Okay? So, because our children are growing in this developed society, technological society, they will be more slaves than we are probably. Please, build a relationship so that you know how to handle this. You can tell them in your nice opportune moment that this is good, this is bad. This is one area and the family session is another. One-to-one -one relationship and family session, giving time, quality time is fundamentally important. And 
I must clarify that giving quality time doesn't mean that mom is cooking, child is talking, child is in the, sitting there. That's not quality time. Quality time means, as we pray in, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's one-to-one -one relationship, okay? That should not be anything in our brain, in our mind, when we pray. It's me and my, my, my God. Quality time means a mother and a son or daughter, father and a son or daughter, both mom and dad, separately, with individual child should spend around 20 minutes in the primary primary age every day. At least should try. If time doesn't allow, at least two, three times a day or at least once a week. And this quality or one to one time is in the absence of anyone. Nobody interferes. And the basic rule is you do not lecture, you simply listen. What happened to your school today? What have you done? And you simply smile and make comment. And if child says, okay, mom, I saw someone falling down and he broke his leg, broke his leg, you say, okay, is, did it happen? You show you, you just participate, you become a good listener, okay? Allah SWT has given us one lips, two ears. Am I right? One mouth and two ears. What's the hikmah in it? We hear more twice than we talk. But sadly, our parents, especially South Asian parents, we talk more. We talk more than the children. We love giving them always hedaya, nasiha, advice, lecture, and they feel bored. They yawn. We don't, we don't recognize what they are feeling. We are blindly out of love. Keep on going, doing things. Love is unique, but love doesn't mean that love is between one between two people. If the other side doesn't accept this love, it is not love. Or if the other side is harmed by your love, it is not love. So one to one time is and I really make this compulsory for anyone who attends this course. And they do this for six weeks and I ask them to do this for the rest of their life. Until until the children are fully matured. And the essence is very simple. So you negotiate with your child. Negotiate means you discuss with your child that I love you. I want to spend 20 minutes because they are small children. Don't give more time with them. I want to spend 20 and I want to hear what you do. I love you. I love your voice. I love you. I love you the way you speak. You praise them like anything. My second son is a doctor who in his childhood, he's, he had a dimple. He still has a dimple. You know, two sides of it. It's lovely. Children, children having dimple, really, really lovely. Do you, anyone having children, children with a dimple? Is a bit, yeah. So I, I gave him the name Dimple Boy. He loved it. So give your child a certain name. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave names to Sahaba. Do you know the original name of Abu Bakr? Do you know the original name of um, Abu Huraira? We don't know this because Professor Hussain gave them these names became famous and he gave the name out of love for them. Ali Radhanu was once lying down in the, in the, in the, um, in, in the soil and Professor Hussain came and saw and he gave his name Abu Turab. Father, father of soil or it's not exactly father, it's a, it's a man who is, who is linked to soil. Abu Huraira is the father of, father of cat. It's not father, but it's a, a man who has a cat. So loving names for a child, child will like and you will love it. So uh, if you say that my dimple boy or whatever, I want to spend half, uh, half an hour with you, 10, uh, 20 minutes with you, we will love it. And I interview every day. And I have seen the children look for this time because this is the time when they can give lecture, lecture on you here. What happens in this school? What happened to your friends? How many books have you read? What have you read? What is your thinking on this world? You keep on asking them questions. And you respond as a good listener. You smile when it is a matter of smiling and you, you show your sympathy and empathy when it is a matter of. And that will gradually, if you keep on doing this for weeks, months and years, and if you keep on doing this until they get married or get a good job, this relationship will, will always be there. Every time anything comes, this will be, this will be exposed. If a child finds something wrong in this life and wants to hide, 
that child will come and tell you. If a child, say adolescent, adult child wants to have a boy, boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever relationship, it will be known to you in advance, within a few days, if you keep this relationship. But if you don't do this one-to-one -one, one -one, um, quality time, then children, no matter how good they are, if they find they have some partners or something else, they will try to hide, hide from you. And that's not good for you. So this is, this is the issue. I'll give you one story, a simple story, and probably um, allow you to ask some questions, because it probably it's getting heavier, I can think. Every child needs to be with mom and dad. But sometimes dads, because dads means fathers, they are outside, they come home late, and especially some of them give excuse that they, are, they were busy in the organizational program, political program, and all sorts of things. All excuses. It is going to be excuses if they do not maintain a balance between family and public life. It is, it is not going to be acceptable, in my opinion. So there is a father who used to come late every night, and he used to see his children lying, and uh, there was no interaction. One day, the father came at 1 o'clock, and the door was opened by his 10-year-old son. And his father was really thinking, what happened? You should be in bed now. And the child opened the door, and... Um, and immediately, straight away, asks father or dad, how much do you earn an hour? Father was angry. What's the matter with you? You are, you know, one o'clock, you are not sleeping, you are asking me how much I, how dare you ask me? So he got angry and son was off put and he went to bed. Father went to eat and um, while eating, he was thinking, I have seen this. My, my, I have seen my son after a few weeks, and I shouted at him. You know, everybody feels guilty when they make some mistake. The father felt that he definitely has made a mistake. So I stopped at him, went to the son. My son, I was, I'm really sorry, I was tired, and I, did, I shouldn't have shouted at you. And um, so you asked me that how much I, I earn. I earn 20 pounds an hour. The son was not sleeping. He sat down in his bed and said, Dad, can you give me 10 pounds? And uh, father became, was trying to become angry, but he controlled his, okay, this is 10 pounds. And the son then became very happy. Then he passed his hand under, under his pillow and brought 10 pounds. And with father's 10 pounds, gave, gave to the father's dad, I need at least one hour from you in my life. So if a father behaves like this, that comes always late, doesn't interact with the child, child needs the father. Child needs the definitely mother. That's, I'm not, it's about father. Normally fathers are guilty in, in this sort of parenting, parenting courses. And there's a Bengali, another Bengali story. I normally give this. A father like this comes home late and children are sleeping. And someone asked, how many children do you have? I have but four children. How old are they, brother? Uh, can you remember? Can you remember? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. One is this size, another that size, another that size. Have you heard this story? Probably, okay. So this is Bengali, Bengali one, but that one is really moving. These are probably story, but the, this size, that size is real. It may be a story, but many fathers behave like this, literally. I have seen this, and that's why I have seen many children lost, and when I go home, went home and talked to them, they cried. That I did exactly like this when I was young, I didn't bother, I didn't care, and one of the fathers, big beard, always goes to the mosque, nearly 70, and he said, but I was, I was, I was not like, like the way I, you see me now. And then I learned this story that one of his child, children was in on the Feltham, Feltham Young People's Prison, 19-year-old. 19-year-old boy went to prison because he was dealing with drugs, he fought, he was arrested, he was put in the prison, and this boy is such, 
Mom and dad, 70-year-old mom, 65-year-old, 60-year-old mom, go to see him every week. Just love because child is in the prison with food and all sorts of things. Child comes, that 19-year-old boy, boy comes and doesn't respond. And rather accuse, why, why do you come to see me every week? Why do you come to see me every week? I'm okay. The father and mother cries in front of me. Why do you cry? So if we produce this sort of children, our life towards the end will be like this. So what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, it is our making. We get what we do. Okay? As an individual, we get what we do. As a community, as an ummah, as the world, we get this is what what's the effect. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس is humans earn with their own hands the calamity and all these things the Muslim must all the problems that we are having now people of Syria moving from Muslim land to and seeking asylum in the West we are coming from a Muslim land to a non-Muslim country have you ever thought on this that our previous generations were not able to produce us and if we fail to produce us our future generation, future will be bleaker, I'm telling you. At least we are Muslims. Okay? In the Western society, in the matriarch society, skin color will not be changed unless they marry and counter-marry and become white. But culture, religion can be totally washed away. That's my fear. That's why I'm passionate about, about these things. It's not, it's not a little thing. So to me, parenting is not, is not an impossible task. It is a rewarding task. It is really an enjoyable task. If you, if you can grow your children as the way you are, you, that's the best. You feel so much pleasure. If your child listens to you, if your child helps you, <clears throat> even if after their marriage and job, that's the pleasure in life. And this pleasure will be, hopefully, inshallah, the ultimate pleasure in the day of judgment. So, please, brothers and sisters, this is a task for you for, for, for the rest of your life. If you can do this with your every child, starting from the age three or four, not, not before that, every day of primary age children, around 15 to 20 minutes, listen, listen to them, participate, don't give any lecture, and bring any issue. This can be done while coming from school, this can be done when you're putting your child in sleep. Putting your child in sleep and bedtime story or mom and dad going and putting the, putting the cool tower, that's, uh, that, has got a, that has got such an impact on a child. The child will learn something in the bedtime story and will go to sleep thinking mom's face and dad's face and that will bond the relationship. So bedtime story, I don't know. How many of you do the bedtime story, moms and dads? Can you raise hands? Bedtime story to your children. Please, all of you should be doing this. Especially when ch your, ch your children are, are in the pri especially in the prim primary age, at least up to eight, seven or eight. Bedtime story. Find time, mom or dad, before going to bed, go with the child, tell a story, or ask him to tell a story, give me kiss and hug and everything and then come out, switch your light and the child in the morning will, go, will wake up with beautiful mind, inshallah. So that is, that is about relationship aspect. Okay, I'll finish this one and then I'll uh, ask you, uh, allow you to ask some, some questions, inshallah. <coughs> Praise. You know, praise is something that is embedded in, in our life. What's the, what's the surah that we always pray in the Salah? Surah Fatiha, okay? What's the first verse? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a beautiful hadith. I know there are some scholars in here. The one who doesn't know to uh, praise or give shukr of others doesn't know how to sh give shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Am I right? My yashkurun, my yashkurun nas, uh, 
So you, you probably know the Arabic, Arabic things as well. So if anybody does any good thing to you, or if anybody f does things that you have asked, and if they do it, the natural consequences you thank, say or Jazakumullah khair, say Alhamdulillah, and if they are your children, then hug them, then praise them, they will feel valued, confident, you will, the love will grow between you, that's the essence of human being. But if you don't know, if you do not do this, then it is going to be mechanical. Okay? It's going to be mechanical. And that's why the Western world, thank you, well done, you know all these words, that is in their culture. In the past, different mosques in Britain, when imams used to teach children in the evening madrasa, you know, five to seven madrasa, supplementary, become, because imams were not used to teach them with this educational ethos. They had cane in one hand and their face was a bit angry always, as if, as if stern. And children at that time, 20, around 20, 30 years ago, it was, it, it was in practice more or less. Children didn't want to come to the evening madrasa because imams were not friendly. And they would shout. And probably some of them would have used cane. Now it's illegal. That's, that's, uh, Alhamdulillah, that's a good thing. And they would love to go to nursery because a nursery teacher, to a three and, a, three and a half years old, will always say good things about you. A handwriting practice, nothing is there. Handwriting is not at all good. But nursery, nursery, nursery will say, nursery teacher will say, what a wonderful writing, wonderful. And give a sticker in here, give a sticker in the cheek. Well done, thank you. Children love it, okay? This is human psychology. But at home, mom will not say thank you. Dad will not say thank you. Madrasa teacher or mosque imam will not say thank you. What is the what is the situation? They will grow love for the non-Muslim teachers who will give them faith. They will start disliking, not hating at least. Somebody may even hate. It is a cultural thing, and it is from the Islamic point of view, it is it is not at all good. Allah Subhanahu has asked us to praise Allah. Allah doesn't need any pray, praise. But he has asked us so that we do to the other creatures. We do to ourselves. It's appreciation. And if you don't say good things about it, at least say, Alhamdulillah, you are able to do this. Praise Allah. In Islam, it is a praising Allah that you have done this. You have been able to do this because Allah helped you to do this. That's why we call Jazakumullah. May Allah give you Jaza for doing this. Whatever language he is, direct, thank you, well done or Alhamdulillah, Shabbat better or whatever. We have to use these languages, we have to use this terminology. If we are miser in using this terminology, then our children will not use this to, to the siblings or brothers and sisters. And when they will go to school and they will not, they will not practice it, they will say, that, then people will say that, what sort of people these are? They, they don't know, this basic courtesy is give thanks. You know, passing in the driving, driving the road and you give, you give way to someone, raise hand. That's an appreciation. So appreciation is part in our parenting technique. It is a parenting technique. So you ask, you know, clear instruction. You ask the child to do something, he does it, you praise and appreciate. You thank. And that builds the relationship. So this appreciation, appre, appre, appreciation or thanking or praise has to be embedded. And it, at home, you can orally thank, but you can hug, you can pet, you can do, you can do whatever you, you can do. That is the way how to build relationship. But remember, praise should be done immediately. It cannot be, assalamu alaikum, and after one day, wa alaikum salam, brother, how are you? It, it, praise is not, is not like this. So it should be immediate. And then, it's not mechanical. You have to be real. Look at your child, you feel, your body language tells that you are, you are flowing with love. Child will understand that mom and dad is really loving me. 
So it has to look at your child, loving eye contact, and come closer, and not from one mile distance. Okay, thank you very much. You know, every mom and dad are busy in cooking and other things. And it could be mechanical. Please do not try to be mechanical. Spend a few seconds, go near your child and hug and come back and do your things. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't harm our cooking or doing anything at home. But if we can make this as our routine in life, then any smile naturally, but don't follow this rule. I have to, I have to smile now. I have to do this. Don't do this. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. I know you will not do this, but, uh, then make it mechanical, make it natural. Also, one thing that you should remember, and I, I, I'm sure you'll be doing this, do not just say you are a good boy or this and that. It is the act that you love. Your smile is wonderful. Your handwriting is wonderful. Your job that you have done is wonderful, stunning. Because a child will make mistake. If you say that you are a good boy, then if he makes a mistake, you cannot say you are a bad boy. He is still a good boy, but his action was not good. Okay? You separate the action from person. Some people make this mistake, always say you are a good boy, this and that. It's better to praise the action, you smile, you work, you helping. The way you help this young man, you, uh, someone helped the ferry people to cross the road, it was wonderful. I remember uh, my son is a uh, elder son, uh, he works in HSBC and on one occasion I was I was traveling with him in the metro tube, okay? Uh, somehow we, we went together, normally I am busy, he's busy and I just observed one thing and I, I mentioned this to my whole family and both of us were st standing and suddenly a youngish pregnant white woman came and stepped into the, st uh, in the platform, uh, what's that called, in the tube, we call it tube, metro. And uh, my son suddenly observed that lady. So, because we were standing, we were not sitting, so we couldn't give, this, give the seat. So he politely asked one of the ladies over there, could you please give this seat to this lady? So that lady immediately realized and she, she stood up and that pregnant lady sat. I just observed my son and the moment I came out of the station, because in the station is, you can't use Wi-Fi, I told this story to my, there is a WhatsApp family group, family WhatsApp. I praised my son like anything. Although he is not 29, he doesn't need any praise. But everybody appreciated that. So find an opportunity of praising someone for any good thing that one does in your family, especially your child. That will be reciprocated. So please thank their activity. Don't simply praise their, as their good boy or bad boys. So I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll allow you to ask a few questions, five minutes. I think it's a very heavy topic getting very heavier. Please be very, very brief. I want one from here, I want one from sisters. Okay. Very brief. Dr. Saifuddin Ahmed. Yeah, Jazakum Lakhar. Assalamualaikum everybody. Well, it will be brief actually, I will try sure. as much as I can. Yeah. Um, Alhamdulillah, that the way you said about comparing children, of course, yeah. this is quite harmful. Um, quickly two things. One is, uh, I could see in our community, and uh, I myself, actually, I'm not kind of immune from that, putting pressure on the children. All the parents, they want the children to be doctors or engineers or something. It's so much of pressure. And quickly, the other thing that you have said about praising, uh, I always remember that I was seeing a patient, uh, I'm from psychiatry, and that boy was 18 years old. I was seeing the patient with a nurse. And I said that you are good boy stuff. So that angles real boy, he said to the nurse, this is the first time in my life somebody has said I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so yeah, thank you. Now, I know you are a psychiatrist, so you know probably better than me. Any, f any question or from sister? Yes, sister. Uh, I think she needs this. In here, probably. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, alaikum, brother. Uh, before we talk about stages of life, yeah, I'm just remembering if, uh, for example, we try to um, 
evaluate ourselves and then we we just see that some of the we feel of life like uh, we lack give uh, love and safety when our child was young and maybe some other things how to pay back the sister has mentioned that if we feel that we haven't done enough in their childhood uh, that means we made a mistake how do we redress this mistake am i right okay that makes sense okay i think nothing is too late in this world that's what i say say if you realize even after your uh, and this question came from many people in the past um, if you realize that you haven't done enough or your parenting was really really rubbish or weak and the child has become bad or whatever how do you redress this my opinion to that is nothing is probably too late if the child has already become become bad as has entered into the entered into the prison or drug addicted at least what we can do in our nice moment with the child if we are able to talk we should apologize to them my son i really i really messed up as parenting and apologize to the son or daughter i really messed up my life i really probably destroyed your life please forgive me but if there is any chance for you to come on your own then it will be wonderful and many son or daughter they will realize that okay uh, my father my parents didn't behave with me properly and it is time for me to learn things some of them may come back from all sorts of bad things some of them may not may not come back but at least from your conscience there is the in islam there is an opportunity for us to repent it's a sort of repentance and repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh Lord, I have made I have made a mistake. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And to the child that you have done, if he is alive, she is alive, and and say that uh, you are sorry. Okay, and that might help. And if it happens before the child gets is not yet that bad, then child will probably come back, inshallah. And from then on, we we'll try to maintain as as best possible parenthood as possible. Um, we all make mistakes. and um, and um, not everybody at every time is is able to control all sorts of things there is an there is another important area of anger i will spend some time on anger management because many many muslim parents anger is their enemy so i'll discuss that inshallah jazakumullah is there any any last question okay Assalamu alaikum my dear ji uh just uh, I, i just to put a little scenario say for example um <coughs> we try to discipline our kids with the technology say you know you have to go to the bed now uh, return your uh, mobile phone or you have yeah. teenager kids yeah uh, 15 16 and if they do some argument yeah or they still trying to yeah. continue say you try to discipline all uh, yeah. us all the time but similarly uh maybe you they got their friends they their dad uh, or their parents doesn't do that at all mm-hmm. they leave them alone and they are suffering they doing the, everything pr- fine but why are you doing too much on us mm-hmm. how do you handle this i think handling depends on this situation if you if you feel that your child will not obey you do not force because if he disobeys then there could be argument and in that argument some child can even hit their parents so be very careful if you feel that child is not going to listen to you do not press too hard because child has got gone probably to ex- to an extent that <coughs> shouting and hurting is not going to work that's why the preparation has to be done earlier so that a child does not come to that stage that is the actual prevention okay that's called the prevention prevention is always better than cure there are doctors in here and definitely agree with me prevention is always better than cure but say situation like that comes what discipline techniques you you take there are discipline techniques i'll i'll discuss this inshallah you do not shout you do not get angry you maintain your calmness you probably give the child a space a step back for 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 a while you think what 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 step you are going to take do not 
allow the argument come between you and your child. The moment the argument comes, you may get angry. He may get angry. And anger is animal. Anger is really harmful. Anger is fire. And like a spark, it can, it can does harm between you and him or her. And um, in Birmingham in England, many years ago, a Bengali father, normal father, um, his daughter was having an affair, affair with another man and father didn't like. Daughter came home, there was an argument, an argument, father-daughter argument. An argument became heated and in the spur of the moment, he killed his daughter and he, suffered, he was in jail for many years. This, this is not one instance, there are many instances like this. When you feel that there is, an, there is, there is a room for uh, argument or heated argument, step back. It is your responsibility to come back. Control yourself. Don't allow anger and frustration to overtake you. Otherwise, you will, you know, imp anger is impulse. Out of impulse and anger and frustration, you can do certain things that will cost whole of your life and career. So there are techniques, one or two small techniques, and that may work or may not work. Okay, I think um, we can have a break.